Hey, Gaming Geek here with Mutants and Death Ray Guns. This is a game from the same people who made Songs of Blades and Heroes, a really simplified uh, skirmish game that I really like a lot. And so I wanted to try out the futuristic version that focuses more on firing and guns. Because in Song of Blades and Heroes, the fantasy version, uh, ranged attacks are barely nothing. And so I want to see how the rules works out with having ranged attacks. And so we'll go ahead and walk through most of the rules together. I have a quick playthrough at the very end, and then I'll come back and share with you what I think. All right, so I have a digital copy of Mutants and Death Ray Guns. This first section tells you about what you need, which is on each side you need three sets of dice along with a shooting die to check if your uh, shooting weapon gets jammed. Also you need a measuring stick and since I'm using 28 millimeter miniatures I need to make measuring sticks that are these lengths for short, medium, and long. And how I made mine was um, I just made all of the lengths onto one stick where this is short which is 75 millimeter medium which is 120 millimeter and then long which is 180 millimeter and so you'll want one of these measuring sticks for each side next you want to create your party and have two teams and basically you can pick between humans mutants animals plants androids robots and the wretched which are pretty much zombies and so I picked two teams. The first one is androids, and then the second one are the mutants. On each team, you can have a champion and a leader. One character can be both a champion and a leader. Basically, the leader drops their quality die down one, which improves it. The lower, the better. That's the, what you need to roll. So if I'm making a quality check on Janet, I would pass because anything three or above. Normally and androids are 4 plus and a combat of 3, uh, but the leader ability drops it down to um, 3 plus for quality. The champion, Chang here, uh, quality is still 4 plus, but the combat value will rise to 4. So combat, the higher, the better. And then the mutants over here, it's the same thing, Lieutenant Dan is my leader and then uh, Sergeant Pepper here is my champ. Each of the factions will tell you what you can roll. So for example for the humans you make two rolls on the equipment table and then humans also make two rolls on the skills table. So you can go ahead and see for each faction uh, what they get to roll and what equipment they can have. So I went ahead and already um, copied over all of the traits that they have. Uh, the androids, uh, leader ability, uh, Janet is steadfast and she's equipped with a needler and so on and so forth. You do normally have five on a team but just for the sake of being able to go through this tutorial quickly I only have two scrubs and they are supposed to be different from each other. You roll independently but again for the sake of the game uh, for this tutorial, I just made them with all of the same abilities. Uh, same thing over here with the mutants. I have two scrubs who have the same abilities here as well. That just makes it a little bit easier to keep track of everything. And I would suggest that with your first game to go ahead and have um, only your leader and your champion be distinct with uh, separate die rolls to figure out what their characteristics are and then have your scrubs, either two or three of them. Uh, that way you won't be overwhelmed by all the traits that are there. For these sheets, I just copied and pasted all the characteristics so I wouldn't have to look them up as the game goes along. So the first thing you do is you roll a die on each side and whoever rolls the highest, which are the mutants, uh, and they will go first. And the activation is really unique in this game. What you do is uh, you'll decide which one of your models that you're going to go ahead and activate first. So let's say I'm going to go ahead and activate Lieutenant Dan. Uh, I choose to roll anywhere between one to three die. 
And so I need to make a quality roll of 3 plus. And so I roll my die. And here I passed two of them and I failed one. So Lieutenant Dan, during this turn, is going to get two actions. And then with Sergeant Pepper, if I was activating him, again, I can choose to roll um, one to three die. And here I have two successes as well because he needed a quality roll of four plus. Now, why would you ever not roll three die? Well, the reason is because Let's say with Lieutenant Dan, I went ahead and rolled this, where I have two failures and one success, or I have three failures. Anytime you roll two or more fails, then play goes over to the other side. So there's a little bit of a push your luck in this activation phase. And you can just choose to roll two die, and that way you will mitigate the chances of you failing, although you can still fail with two die. Uh, but here it would have been uh, two successes, so he would get two actions to work with. Theoretically, it's possible you can just roll one die for each of them, and that way you're able to activate all of your models. Once you do activate all of your models, even if you don't roll two fails, the play does go over to the other side, and that's how activations work. And just to note, let's say I did roll two fails here uh, and one success for Lieutenant Dan. Um, I get to actually do the one action first before play goes over to the other side. Obviously, if I roll three fails, I don't get any actions, and so play immediately goes over to the other side. So here is a list of different actions that you can take, and as you can see, some of the actions require more than one. So it, traveling through um, broken terrain, if your move is short, uh, requires two actions in order to do that or making a powerful hand-to-hand -hand attack requires two actions, but most of it is one action. There are some that are zero actions, like dropping an object or dropping down and going prone. That doesn't require an action. So let's go ahead and start off with movement. Uh, let's go ahead and roll for Lieutenant Dan. I'll go ahead and roll three. Oh, look, I failed. So had this been um, a real game, uh, I would only get one activation with him, one action, and then it would pass off to the other side. Uh, but let's go ahead and move him, and most characters, unless they state otherwise, they can move medium. And in this game, uh, models move the full length of the stick and go from end to end, like that. So in most games, you just go from front of the base to front of the base, like that. But in this game, you actually go um, from uh, the front end all the way to the back end of the stick. Also in this game, you cannot, you have to go in a straight line for that action. And you can choose to not go the full length. So let's say I wanna stay in cover, I could just move um, this length here and stay behind uh, that box and not go my full length. But let's say I went all the way out here and I wanted to shift and turn and go that direction, that would actually require another action, uh, let's say I did have another success here, then I could have used um, this second success to shift directions and move again. And that way I can go like this. So all movement has to be in a straight line. You have to do a second move action in order to pivot and shift. Also, you can move through friendlies as long as you don't end um, with your bases overlapping. So this back guy could do a medium move uh, through his friendly. You cannot uh, move through enemies. Also, you can't break up your movement. So you can't uh, use your move action to move halfway, sh use another action to shoot, and then finish uh, the movement of your first action. You have to first finish your whole movement before doing another action. Also, moving through rough terrain, let's say um, they're trying to move through these obstacles, uh, reduces your movement by one. And so since most characters can move a medium, that means his movement would be reduced to short. And so he could still clear it, but the max he could move would be ending up out here uh, as a short move. If you are already at a short move, then moving through rough terrain actually requires two actions rather than just one action. Uh, there's a bunch of rules about moving through doors. 
and bashing down doors, shooting doors, but I'm not going to go through that. Uh, you can look through that on your own because um, in my scenario, uh, we're not dealing with doors that much. Uh, stairs, though, they do count as broken terrain. And so for a character to move up here, he would only be able to move a short distance. And so this guy would um, pretty much actually be able to do it all in one move if he was starting right at the bottom. Otherwise, he would have to take uh, two movements to get up. And if you take more than one movement, you actually have to roll and see whether or not you fall. See here it says, if a model does more than one move per turn on stairs, he must make a quality roll on a die or fall at the end of the move or at the end of the stairs. So the example here is if he would have failed his quality roll, then you just lay him down like this. All right, so let's say Lieutenant Dan here uh, gets actually three successes and he's gonna use one as an action to move. And so he's going to go uh, within base to base, which allows him to use his other two for an attack, hand-to-hand -hand attack. And so basically how you do hand-to-hand -hand is you roll, each side rolls a die, and so this will be for her, and then uh, this will be for him. And so he rolls a six, she rolls a two, they both add their combat value of three, so his total is nine, hers is a five, and so he is going to win against her. So, the results here. If it's a tie, then nothing happens. If you beat the score with an odd number on the die, the loser retreats by one base, like this, away. But, he won by a six, an even number. You don't count the combat value. You just look at what you rolled on your die. So because he won by an even number, the loser falls to the ground, like this. But if you double the opponent's score, the loser dies. So has a nine, she had a five, and so it's not double, so she just falls down. But if uh, this was, uh, let's say she rolled just a one for total score of four, then nine would be more than double and that figure would just be removed. She would have been killed. If you triple the opponent's score, the loser suffers a gruesome kill, which can potentially spread fear and um, the friendlies that are uh, within range will have to roll a morale. So here are the hand-to-hand -hand modifiers. If you're fighting against more than one foe, it's minus one per every adjacent foe above the first. So let's imagine in this circumstance, uh, when he went in to attack, there were two others besides the target that is also in hand-to-hand. -hand. He's outnumbered. It's minus one for each one above the first, and so he would actually have a minus two to his roll. So his total of nine would then become a seven versus her five. He still would have won, but uh, not by as big of a gap. Attacking a transfix or knockdown foe uh, gives you a plus two, and the foe is killed if it's beaten by one or more. And so let's say she was knocked down, and I rolled this, um, I'd get a plus two, so this total would be an 11. Uh, versus whatever she rolled, but all I have to do is roll one more and then the figure is, is dead and is removed. That's why knocking someone down is uh, important because once they're knocked down, just winning a battle will kill the opponent. And then finally, performing a powerful attack which takes two actions is a minus one on the opponent's combat. And so I could have chosen, rather than just spending one action die of my remaining th uh, two, I could have chosen to use both actions for a powerful attack, and that would give her a minus one, which really didn't matter in this case, because then that would have put her at a four, and he still would have beat her at a nine. Other modifiers. There's an ambush bonus. So if he would have started um, out of sight, not just behind cover, but out of sight, and then charged in this round, then he gets a ambush bonus of plus one to his combat. Uh, mountain models also have a plus one. Defending an obstacle or being in an elevated position is also plus one. A big or huge model against a smaller is plus one. Power armor plus two. Hand to hand specialist plus one. If the model is a sharpshooter, then they actually get a minus one. One thing about knockdown models is they are able to attack as normal. It's just that their opponent is gonna get a plus two. 
or knockdown model can spend one action to stand up. So in this case, it would behoove her to stand up because, again, if she loses even by just one, she's killed. So it's better for her to use an action to stand up and then attack rather than attack from being uh, prone. Also, it says here, model must recoil when the opponent wins in hand-to-hand -hand with an odd result. So let's say um, he had rolled a five. Uh, instead of her being knocked down, she would just move one base away like that, which is recoiling. If the recoil brings the model in contact when any active uh, opponent, the enemy model gets one free hack attack against the recoiling model. The free hack attack is rolled like a normal attack, but only the opponent can damage the recoiling model. So models in melee can choose to break away, but the opposing model does get a free attack. So you declare that you're going to break away, you go ahead and roll like you normally do, and here you have a 7 versus a 6, and so he would win. Because he rolled and beat by even, she would fall down. If it was odd, then he would recoil. And so because she falls down, she isn't able to break away. Now let's say she did win. Let's say she got a 6. That, um, that means that she would be able to leave, but that doesn't knock him down, nor is there any negative effect on him. All right, so let's talk about range combat. So let's say our leader here, Janet, who has a needler, is going to be shooting at Lieutenant Dan. So let's first talk about range. The needler we read here says it has a medium range. And so uh, Lieutenant Dan is beyond medium range, but is within double of the medium range. And when we look over here, if a target lies within double of the range, the attack is at minus one. And so this roll is going to be at a minus one because it's double the range. Also, it's going to be minus one because Lieutenant Dan has cover behind this box. She has line of sight to him, but is um, he will gain a cover bonus of an additional minus one. But the Needler has a plus two combat bonus, so effectively those negative modifiers are taken away because of that plus two. So we go ahead and roll, and basically because they're both plus three to their combat, uh, Lieutenant Dan is going to win that roll. But let's say she actually wins it and rolls a odd, what that does is immediately he recoils, but unlike in hand-to-hand -hand where he just goes back one space, he will actually move back a whole short distance and will remain behind cover if at all possible. So at this point, he recoils back to here. Now had she re um, rolled an even, he would fall down. And actually it is harder to shoot at prone figures and so if she were to shoot again next turn, because you can only um, roll one attack per turn, no matter how many action dice you have, she would now get a, an additional minus one. So her roll would be at a minus one, technically at a minus three because of distance, because of cover, and because of prone. But again, because of her plus two combat here, that total makes it only a minus one. Uh, but if she does hit him and beat him just by one more, uh, the figure is removed, is killed, just like before. The other thing you have to roll as well when you are shooting is a firearm uh, die. And so here, I wouldn't have just rolled the green die, or the regular attack die, but would have rolled this as well. Whenever these match up, usually bad things happen. And so you read along here at this table, if the two die come up exactly the same result, and it's an odd number, the weapon jams. And so if this had been a three, then the weapon would have jammed because it's odd. If it comes up even number, the weapon breaks. So let's say I rolled two sixes. The weapon breaks and is useless, you can't use it anymore. Uh, if a character rolls a one when firing a high tech weapon, then the malfunction die comes up one, two, so double ones basically, and it's a high tech weapon then the weapon jams and burns up an energy cell. So Janet would have to use an energy cell to shoot, uh, to shoot the weapon in future turns after she unjams. Uh, you can unjam a weapon by spending an action and then making a successful Q roll on the die. So when it's her turn, uh, she has to roll 
And here she would have succeeded on her Q roll, so the weapon unjams, and then would have to need to use another action to shoot. The other thing to remember is whenever a shooter rolls an unmodified one on a ranged attack, the shooter has run out of missiles or ammo. And you can't attack until you reload it. So reloading just takes one additional action and one energy cell. So once you run out of energy cells, then you uh, run out of ammo and you can't, do it, you can't use that weapon anymore. Line of sight in this game is pretty much um, any part of the base to any part of the base. So here we see him. Uh, his base is peeking around and is visible to this guy. Uh, all three of them have visibility because any part of their base can touch that part of the base. Uh, cover just requires any obstruction of the base. Also in this game, you cannot shoot into or out of melee. So if the target or the shooter is in melee, you just can't shoot. A knockdown model can shoot normally and doesn't have any penalties with high-tech weapons but a minus one with a bow or other primitive range weapons. And what we mean by primitive is uh, thrown like a rock, a javelin, an axe, a sling. Uh, those are all primitive weapons. A model can voluntarily go prone and that does not cost an action. Uh, just like in hand-to-hand, -hand, you can choose to use two actions to make an aim shot and it gives a minus one to the opponent's uh, combat score. And here is a list of all the range combat modifiers that talks about cover, uh, range, uh, whether or not the target is big or huge, and all that kind of stuff. I'll let you go ahead and look at that list. All right, next we talk about morale. When do you take morale checks? First is a gruesome kill, which is, again is three times the opponent's roll. Uh, any friendly models within one long distance of the kill uh, must make a morale check. Also, uh, if they are charged by an opponent with terror characteristic and when the leader is killed or when half of the party is killed. How do you make a morale check? You roll three dice and you're trying to roll the quality of your character. And so let's say for these scrubs their quality is four. He's rolling three dice and he only has one success. He has two failures. And it says, on two failures, the model must make two moves towards the table edge or terrain feature. On all three failures, it is automatically runs away and the model is removed from play. A one failure, they just move one move. And so in this case, if this guy would have failed, uh, he makes two moves, but even one takes him off the board, which in effect uh, removes him from play. He isn't killed, so you're able to use him in subsequent uh, games but he's just out of play during this turn. Again, if a model is in melee and runs away, um, the opponent will immediately get a free hack at it. And if it wins, the running model is killed. So here's a cool feature in this game, and that is group actions. So as long as you have a leader on your team and you've activated that leader, she can use one of her action die, uh, one of her actions to command a group and a group has to be touching each other base to base can command that group to doing one action each as long as they are within a long range at least one character one character of the group has to be within long range of the leader which is true here so what happens is now she, after she has spent her action to make a group activation you still have to roll your die again choosing anywhere between one to three die and you roll for that whole group and in this case, uh, I would have gotten one success but two failures. Also, one thing to note is that the leader ability gives a um, plus one to their quality rolls, uh, but they still would have failed because they need a four plus. So you would have only become threes, uh, and this becomes a five. But they will have one activation before they pass it off to the other side, and that means each one in this group can have one activation. Which, would all, um, which they can all be separate actions. But if you want to keep them together so that they can have another group activation, uh, just make sure that they're touching their bases. And this is up to five models can be in one group. The other thing that you can do is regroup, which is sort of the um, opposite of the group move, which is when they're all scattered about, you can, again, use one of the actions of the leader. And as long as each character is within a long distance, you can command them to regroup where they just do move actions to be able to touch base to base. 
The other one is concentrated fire, where two to five shooters can concentrate onto a single target. And again, the leader spends an action to give that order, and the shooters all have, they don't have to be touching each other, but they all have to be within uh, one long distance of the leader. You make one roll for the whole group, and the target receives a minus one on its C-score for every shooter beyond the first. And that's pretty much it for the rule book. The rest of the rule book is mostly traits, explaining traits. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do an example, a couple of rounds, so that you get an idea of how all the rules work together. Uh, the first thing, though, is that the champs, both of them, rolled drugs, and so Chang here on the Android side is going to take his stimulant drug, which gives a plus one to quality rolls for the duration of the game. So his quality is now going to be three plus instead of four for this game. And then Sergeant Pepper here on the mutant side, he rolled a frenzy drug, which gives him a plus one melee for the duration of the game. So I put a plus one right here as a reminder. Also, really important, the leader ability is that it gives a plus one uh, to quality and morale rolls for any friendly model that is within long distance of the leader. And they have to be within line of sight uh, in order to get this bonus. And so the quality of both the champion will increase by one, uh, which will now make that a three plus as well as the scrubs will also be three plus. The bonus does not apply to the leader himself. So let's go ahead and roll and see who goes first. And the mutants will go first and I will go ahead and activate Lieutenant Dan and I will go ahead and roll three dice. And he needed a three plus and so he's gonna get three actions. Um, and he's gonna save one of his actions to do a group action. One of his moves, um, the lieutenant has a medium move and will move out a little bit uh, because he has some pretty good stats and so he's going to move out here. And then for his second action, I don't quite think he is far enough. I'm going to keep him behind cover. Well, let me see, is he able, is he able to move out there? Yeah, he can. Although, because his base clips this obstacle, he has uh, reduced it down to a short move. And so that will leave him right here instead because he had to cross this. So he's going to stay there. That used two of his actions. And then one action he's going to give to these guys. And they'll, they will do a group action. For group action, you roll. I'm going to choose three dice to roll for them. And they have a quality of... Three, remember, because of the leader ability, but they fail two. So it's going to go over to the other side, which doesn't matter because all of them are activating anyway. So they will get one action. And as a group, I'm going to keep them together. They are all going to just make a move. And so this guy will end up here. And I'm actually going to keep them touching base to base so that they can subsequently do another group action. So that's their turn. We'll go ahead and go over to this side. I'll do the same thing and activate uh, Janet, who is my leader. Uh, I'm also gonna do three dice for her. And she has quality three, which means she gets two actions. One of them she's going to save for a group activation. And the other one, um, she's just gonna move over here and stay within cover. So he, they're going to do a group activation. We'll go ahead and roll all three. And their quality is at three as well because of the leader ability. So they're going to have two activations. And let me see their movement. I think they're going to stay behind cover and shoot. They have a shotgun. You know what? I'm going to keep him behind cover. So they're not going to move their full move, but let's see here. I will keep them base to base. And again, I also want them to be able to group activate as well. So we'll do that for their first action. And then the second action, they're going to go ahead and shoot. And he 
is going to be double the range because uh, the range is medium. So that means a minus one, but also he's getting benefit. Let me see, center to center. Yeah, he's getting benefit of this obstacle. So it will actually be a minus two modifier, which nullifies the plus two. So it'll be a straight roll. We need this dice to see if it jams, and then this die for the lieutenant. So let's see what we get on the first shot. Uh, so four, um, six, does, oh, oh, we do add the um, combat value. So that's a seven, but the combat value is the same. So the lieutenant wins. But in range attacks, there is no opposing effect. So nothing happens and the shot misses. Uh, for this guy, who's, this guy who's also shooting, it's gonna be the same modifier. So it's a straight roll. And once again, Lieutenant Dan shrugs off the shot and nothing happened because we didn't roll doubles with the jam dice. So it's gonna go ahead to the mutants and same thing. I'm gonna start off with the Lieutenant. I'm gonna roll all three and he fails only one. He'll have two activations. He's gonna save one for the group. He's gonna shoot. He's gonna actually use his action to activate his mutation, which is energy projection. Basically has an electric gun uh, that shoots out of his hands or his eyes. And so it's a plus one in range combat. Range is short. And so I think it's gonna be double. Uh, not quite. That's actually going to be triple, which uh, is going to be at a minus three. So with the plus one, that makes it a minus two. Range is short. But it's lethal against robots and androids, which means as long as he wins, uh, he instantly kills the opponent. So he's going to go ahead and take the minus two and roll with the jam dice. And we'll see. He's going to shoot at this guy first. Uh, not only a minus two, but he's going to get cover, so it's at a minus three. So minus three would be a six, so he fails to hit. Let's see if the electric gun actually has more than one shot. Yes, it has multiple shots. So any gun that says yes in terms of having multiple shots, they are able to shoot at another enemy figure as long as they're within... Um, I think short distance of another. And so obviously they're touching. So he gets a free roll against the neighbor. And so he's going to do the same thing. This is going to be at a minus three. And that's going to be zero. So that's a fail. So, nope, nothing happened. Oh, you know what? And he'll actually shoot at the champion um, again at a minus three because he's within short range. Because the champion has a combat ability of four, whereas the leader has, Lieutenant Dan has a three, so he has one more. So this is actually a six versus a three plus three is six. It's tied, so nothing happens there. So Lieutenant shots all missed. And now we're going to go ahead with um, the group activation. Roll all three dice and they're gonna get two actions. Because they have javelins, uh, they get a free throw as long as they move one medium towards the target. So they're gonna go ahead and split up at this point. And this guy's gonna go first. He's gonna go a medium length. And huck a javelin at him. And pretty much, I think, he's got line of sight. He's not going to get bonus off of that. And a javelin has no bonus plus to range combat. But he just gets that as a free action. So, let's go ahead and roll. He also has to roll the jam dice. And then uh, the defense die here. He is shooting this guy here, another scrub. And so he rolls a 5 plus his combat skill makes that an eight. Um, the other guy rolled a two plus his combat is a three which is a five. So he successfully hits. It's odd which pushes him back. Uh, he needs to recoil one uh, space. 
basically the space of his base. So he's pushed back, which the benefit of that is they're no longer in contact and so they can't do group activations anymore because they went out of contact. And so he succeeded in doing what he needed to do. Uh, he actually does have one other action because it was a free action for him to throw his javelin and he can only he can only attack once per turn. So even though he has another action, I think I'm just going to move him behind cover here. So that finishes his two actions. Now this guy, he's going to pretty much do the same thing and move up. And oh, you know what? I think he actually hit this guy. So this guy uh, moved back. Um, so he's going to shoot at him and he will get cover bonus. So this will be at a minus one. So this is going to be a miss uh, because uh, even without combat values, uh, he's lower than that. So nothing happens there. Extra move, I will just stick him over here for his second action. And then this guy, let's see, does he have... He's actually... Um, favoring melee because he has no shooting weapon and so Sergeant Pepper will just jump in. He also has a mutation of flying which enables him to go over uh, any obstacles without any penalty uh, which doesn't really matter here because there are no obstacles in his way at this point so he's going to have to move twice in order to get within melee which he will do so he'll move here first fly he's still up in the air so he will just jump here and go into melee with this guy who's isolated. Uh, and even though he doesn't have an action to go melee, um, that's okay. Uh, because in melee attacks, the combat affect one another. So even if he gets attacked by this guy, uh, he has the advantage. Our three actions. You know what? I'm going to go for broke. She's going to try to shoot their leader with a needler. So her first move, because of that obstacle, gets reduced to short. He's, she's going to bump into him, and so can't quite go as far. But then for a second move, because you can move through friendlies, uh, she's going to make it all the way out here. And essentially get a unobstructed attack with her Needler. Needler is a plus two to combat, so she's going to roll. She does need the jam dice, and then up against his die. Whoa, well, low rolls, but she did roll higher than him. I do think that she's going to prevail because both of them have the same combat skill of three, so let's not bother adding that to the die, and has a plus two for the Needler. So she's going to win. She did roll a even, which will knock him down. Any subsequent hit is going to kill him, but he will probably stand up. I'm actually going to, again, go for broke and move this guy forward, so I'm only activating him. Uh, and I will roll. Yeah, I really want uh, not to lose my uh, initiative, so I'm only rolling two dice. Oh no, I still rolled fails. So he gets no activation and it goes over to the mutant side, which is lucky for Lieutenant Dan because he's gonna go ahead and activate because he needs to stand up. So he's gonna roll and he gets two successes. He is going to use one action to stand and another action to use his mutant ability. So this is plus one in range. Range is short and, and it's lethal. So again, all he has to do is win uh, this roll and he can kill her since she is an android. So let's see what happens here. Oh, wait a second. Uh, let me see, plus one, so that turns that into a four. Uh, again, they have the same um, combat skill, so it's tied. So nothing really happens. So I'm going to go ahead and roll for him because I want him to activate. So I'm going to roll all three die. And he needed a quality three because of, um, Dan oh wait, let's see if Lieutenant Dan is within range. No, look, he's not within long, so he does not get the bonus. So his quality is four, so he gets two activations, which is still plenty. So he's going to go ahead and break away. Uh, he's already in melee with him, but wants to break away 
And so there's a free hack that this opponent will have as he's breaking away. And so we'll just roll uh, these two dice. Um, even, even though the android got the higher number, um, the combat value makes this a 9. And Sergeant Pepper has a combat value of actually 5 in melee. So that makes this a 10. So he doesn't hurt him, but he man it enables him to break away for free. And he's going to use that to go medium, which is plenty far enough to be in melee with Janet. So that was the first action. The second action, he's going to go ahead and swipe at her because he does have a plus one uh, here. So his combat is value is five, which is pretty high. So he will roll this. She will roll this. Let's see what they get. Oh, he rolled a one, which is an automatic failure, even though he has a plus five. Ones are failures and sixes are successes. And so she is going to win. This roll has an odd, so that push, he, it forces him back one uh, base length. Yeah, all these guys are gonna go ahead and gang up. Oh, you know what? I forgot they have plus one to hit with ranged weapons and they suffer minus one in melee combat, so they're bad at melee. So they're gonna go ahead and shoot a javelin and gets a plus one because they have the sharpshooter ability. So he's gonna go ahead and huck a javelin at her with his first action. And so still gotta roll the jam dice. And let's see, one plus one equals two plus three is five. And then four plus three is seven. So she wins, but nothing happens because that was range. She doesn't affect him. Uh, so that was the first ac action. No, he, he wants to stay there. So he's going to forego his second action. Um, now it's his turn. He'll roll, choose all three activation dice, uh, and gets two successes. He will do exactly the same thing. We'll huck a javelin at her and see what they get. Oh, he's going to actually succeed because he got a 5 plus a 3 is 8. And she has a 1 plus a 3 is 4. So succeeds with an even, that will knock her down. So she's in danger. Although, all of my uh, mutants activated, so now it goes to this side. So of course, I'm going to go ahead and activate her to try to save her life, at least stand her up. She has two successful actions. First action, stand up. Actually, she's going to shoot her needler. Let me see, short range. Yeah, she's going to shoot her needler at him because she'll be able to repeat fire at those guys for free. So for her first action, she stands up. Her second action, she's going to shoot first at Sergeant Pepper. And she gets a bonus plus two combat here. Um, so she will get a 6 plus a 3 is 9, 5 plus 4. Uh, the plus 1 in melee doesn't affect, uh, is also 9. So it's even, nothing happens. Uh, she's going to go ahead and shoot at him. And uh, because of the plus 2, uh, she's going to beat out that scrub. And... As an odd, it will push him back one, uh, and then she will shoot. Oh, and these are all at minus one, actually, uh, because when you shoot repeatedly, the subsequent shots after the initial target is at a minus one, so I forgot that. Let's go ahead and do the same with him. And so she, does, does she win that? That's a plus two, which is five, plus three is eight. And then 4 plus 3 is 7. Oh, she does beat him. Oh, I had a minus 1, though. So 7 and 7, so nothing happens. I think I'm going to go ahead and stop here. Um, the only thing we didn't cover is morale. If one of these lieutenants would have gotten killed, everyone would have needed to take a morale test. Uh, if you fail a morale test, you just start running towards the edge. And if you hit the edge of the board, uh, you're taken off the board. So there you have it, a quick overview of how mutants and death ray guns work. And what are my thoughts? Well, I have to say that between this game 
and Dead Zone, I clearly like Dead Zone better. And here's the reason why. Even though there's really only two stats, uh, the quality as well as the combat skill, there are a ton of modifiers. So trying to keep track of all the modifiers and the minuses and bonuses to your rolls uh, was a little bit cumbersome and I'm sure I forgot a lot through my playthrough. I liked Dead Zone's mechanic of just adding dice or removing dice as a modifier rather than trying to figure out uh, what to add to each die roll. Now, I think it's a little bit easier to do when you're only controlling one faction. I'm obviously controlling both sides in the game, so it's easy for me to forget all the abilities. Also, you need to keep track because you're rolling randomly for all of the traits to each one of your members. Um, that's a lot of different skills that you have to keep track of. So at the end of the day, I actually think Dead Zone is more streamlined and more simplified to play rather than uh, mutants and death ray guns. Although I do have to say that uh, combat resolution is pretty quick and it is key to keep your leader alive because it's significant to have that uh, plus one bonus to your quality as long as your leader is alive. Uh, it is quick, it is fun, it does have a campaign mode and that's sort of the heart of uh, the game is that you can play through an entire campaign in one afternoon or an evening because the game goes by quickly. I also really like the push your luck mechanic when you are rolling to activate each figure. And the fact that you can choose to activate some figures uh, two times in a row uh, after you receive the turn back to you, I like that as well, that you don't have to activate every single model on your team first before you can activate uh, the same model. Um, and I like that it's, it is sort of luck whether or not you maintain uh, the turn on your side versus rolling two fails and needing to send it over to the other side. So that makes it really unpredictable. So that mechanic I really like a lot. But overall I think in terms of game experience I think Dead Zone is still my favorite game with streamlined rules and uh, quick gameplay. Uh, I prefer that. This is a good game and it's only eight dollars for the PDF so very cheap and as it is uh, miniature agnostic you can pick any miniatures that you already have in your collection and I like that a lot as well. Um, I used some of my dust miniatures uh, for the Android side and then I used Shadows of Brimstone, Tredarans for the mutant side so you can pick any miniatures that you want, any scenery that you want and uh, that's really good and so it's very cheap to get into and you only need six sided die. Dead Zone is a li little bit easier to manage with all of the modifiers. So at the end of the day, uh, Dead Zone is still on top. I hope you like this rules walkthrough as well as playthrough. Gave you a good idea of this game. And hit the like button and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.